there a problem here? And this is really where we're going to talk a little bit about some basic, not even quite econometrics necessarily, but just basics of statistics. But did you feel comfortable just looking at a very basic statistical test here and saying, oh yeah, just do difference in means, it's totally fine, t statistics based on the number of observations we have, not a problem. Does this seem a little oversimplified to anyone? I feel like some of you are giving me faces that are like, yes, kind of, but I don't know why, so please don't ask me. <laughs> One of the assumptions that's made, you know, think about what's actually happening here to get to this T statistic, is we're doing, you know, some proportions and then we have the, you know, the standard deviations and all, and all this stuff, right? And this is fundamentally also related to the number of observations in each of those proportions, right? That if we're going to do a T test for the difference in proportions, there's an N in it somewhere. Technically, there's an N1 and an N2 for the number of observations in one category versus the other. One assumption that's made in order for those test statistics to be valid is that all of the observations are independent. So if I had, you know, if I kept flipping a coin repeatedly, obviously those, those observations are independent. But that's not always going to be the case, right? And in this sample, you know, think about, and that's part of why I had you do the exercise of showing what PLR and TGR actually represent and how they're calculated. Because we said that they're aggregated both across investors and across time. So if I then ask you, are each of those data points truly independent from one another, that answer is probably no. That by doing this simple test, we probably inflated these test statistics because we acted like we had a whole bunch of things that were independent observations when they weren't really independent observations. That we made essentially made our effective sample size look a lot bigger than it should be in practice. And say, well, you know, again, can we put this in words? These are two quotes from the paper that explain why these errors are likely to be correlated either across investors or across time. Because if we think about just the nature of buying and selling, if you think about, you know, say people are selling based on information or selling based on some sort of feeling, it's not the case that every investor is getting different information that it's often the case that investors are acting on some form of common information, in which case they would stand to reason that their actions are not truly independent if they're all coming from that same information. You could think about it that way. You could also think about the fact that my decision, you know, say I'm holding on to a stock. Does it really make sense to say, well, Yesterday, I held on to my Google stock for reason A, but today I'm holding on to that Google stock for reason B, and tomorrow I'll be holding on to Google stock for reason C. You're like, well, no. What's more likely happening is to say, remember that reason that was relevant yesterday? Hey, guess what? It's still relevant today. Hey, guess what? It's still relevant tomorrow. So you also have, even within an investor, you have these observations not being truly independent across time because it's likely, you know, similar factors that caused you to not sell something yesterday is what caused you to not sell something today. So we want to be really careful and say, can we do better? Can we make sure that we're not seeing what we see in the data and we're not seeing statistical significance because we treated things as independent when they actually worked. And the calculations here are not what's important. What's important is the reminder, just that, that intuitive notion of, oh yeah, you can't do that, both so you can avoid that when you're doing your own data analysis, 
and also so you can be a smart consumer of data analysis and realize when other people who are writing things that you're reading are completely full of crap. So just hopefully a helpful reminder. The paper does go through and say, well, what can we do to show that these st test statistics are not so inflated that we wouldn't see st statistical significance without introducing these problems? And so it goes through and says, well, if you want to control for the common information problem, we can do PGR and PLR by investor and look at whether individual investors show the disposition effect. If individual investors show the disposition effect by aggregation, we have the disposition effect. You could also do PGR and PLR by shares. The point is the paper goes through, and it is helpful to look at at least the basics of it. The paper does go through and try to address this problem. 